Hey, are you worried about trying to find a gift for Mother's Day, which is May 13th? Coming up pretty soon here. Well, you could get a cool skull or like an egg or something from ColinMullen.com. You could support me and make your mother happy with a rad skull. ColinMullen.com Hey everybody, real quick before I get started, I just want to talk about this painting a bit and then I'll get on to today's subject matter. This is probably a little bit more sped up or a longer video than usual just because this painting took me a little longer than usual. It's on display right now if you go to uh, Lamp Post Coffee in Round Rock, Texas, along with a bunch of other paintings, including that egg painting that you guys love so much. Um, it's just speaking of which, the analytics for stuff is super weird. I guess you guys like hearing more about my life than um, like lists and stuff like that, so I guess I'll try and make more content like that. Honestly, as long as I get to talk about art, I'm kind of fine with whatever. I just kind of figured you'd like that more. Uh, this painting is of a game called Day of Infamy. It's made by the same people who did Insurgency. Originally, it was a uh, Insurgency mod. Obviously, this one's set in World War II. Uh, this one is in Braville. If you go to one of the houses right near the uh, front line, the first uh, capture point, you'll be able to see this little bathroom. It's it's a nice game, it's a pretty game, it's well made, but it is like a PTSD generator. I'll link my highlight video after uh, this video is over, so look for that in the end card. The, they were actually super cool when I did the highlight video, because they uh, retweeted it and stuff, and that really helped it out quite a bit. So I kind of pushed up this video a little bit more, because I'm like, man, I love this game, and they love me, and that's awesome. So anyway, uh, let's get on to today's subject. Sorry about the ramble. So originally I was just going to answer this one question because I, I wanted to talk about like, you know, how to price your art. But then I realized that like, I'm not still very confident in how I price my art. And so instead I figured what I'd do is I'd just answer questions. And that was mostly prompted because of uh, this one anon on Tumblr. If you ever have questions related to this channel, or related to art that you want to ask me, feel free to ask them in the comments of any of the videos. I get notified when people comment. so. Um, it's easier for me to find them there. Also, it just means that you're cool with me putting it here. And also just, I don't know, it helps out the channel. It's that whole like, comment, subscribe thing. It's, YouTube really prioritizes videos that um, have a lot of viewer engagement, as they say. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. If I ever need something to talk about, I will definitely bring one up. Anyway, this Anon asks, and also, I... <laughs> I guess I should say, if you're ever feeling too nervous, like you feel like your question's stupid or whatever, feel free to just ask me on Tumblr. Your question's not stupid. There's very few actually stupid questions in this world. And when it comes to art, so much of it is opinion-based. You're not asking a stupid question. But I understand that some people are nervous, so feel free to just anonymously ask me on Tumblr. Anyway, this one anon asks, hey man, it might be a weird question. It's not. But what is your thought process when painting slash drawing? Like construction of parts on paper or do you just go with the flow? Well, okay, so a couple of different answers for that. Um, and it kind of depends. So for me, I like to have a plan. It doesn't matter if it's art, it's music. It doesn't matter if it's, um, I don't know, whatever. Uh, I like to have a plan going into it. Uh, I like to have a plan for my day, but generally speaking, it doesn't go as planned. Uh, what I thought was going to happen, what I think is going to work out the way it does, just doesn't. So instead of doing that, I just um, kind of go with the flow. So it's a little column A, column B. I start with a plan. Um, I feel like one mistake a lot of uh, newbie artists make is they think that they can perfectly create some of the stuff that they're seeing in their head. And I feel like colors shift in my mind when I'm thinking about one section over another section. And so I'll just shift the colors accordingly um, when I'm thinking about it, but then when it actually gets onto the canvas, it looks all weird. And so I have to make some edits and a little bit of a, a change here or there to make it come out the way I want or the way that I think will look good. Um, this is a good example of this. I mean, honestly, this painting, uh, it's very similar to um, the way that it looks in the game. I did a few changes, namely, I. I boosted the contrast, uh, made the darks darker, the lights lighter, and just because I'm a real sucker for contrast, honestly. Um, and some of the stuff didn't come out quite the way I wanted, and I did some edits rather than keeping it directly the way it looks in the game, but more or less, um, this is the way it looks. There are other times where I am i don't come at it with really a, a firm plan like I do with Arcade. Um, I'll come at it with more, I want to do an experiment. 
Like, um, you know, the Hermes and uh, Skull painting. Jeez, what was the name of that one? I'm horrible at naming things, then I don't remember the names that I give them. I'd have to look real quick. Looks like I named him James. I don't know why. I usually just name them just random uh, people names when it comes to the skulls. I think I found a better way of naming things in the future, but I digress. Um, James was very much a um, experiment. I wanted to see like, okay, I like doing these skull paintings, but I, I don't feel too confident with the color compositions that I do. So what happens if I take this color composition I really liked with uh, Hermes and I do it with the skulls? Like, will that look cool? And the answer is kinda. It's not my favorite painting I've ever done, but it's a, um, it's a good improvement. It was good that I experimented. I think that's one thing that, again, a lot of newbie artists don't do is just do an experiment. If something works, you know, how else can you do that and it still work? You know, what else can you do? And so that's sort of my creative process. It's a combination of planning stuff out and then going with the flow once it doesn't go the way I want. And also um, just experiments because um, life isn't certain. Nothing really works out the way you want it to. And so, you know, being ready for any eventuality and having the flexibility to deal with it is really the best plan that you can really have. And so I treat my art, my music, my everything that I do that way, uh, stream the same way. I, I don't expect that streams are gonna um, go quite right really ever. So anyway, uh, that's the answer to that question. Kind of everything. These next few questions come from Twitter because I just didn't have any other Tumblr questions to answer. Uh, Shani Soons asks, uh, what do you think about drawing versus painting as a starting point for artists? Uh, drawing is different than painting really outside of the color, obviously, because you could do color with uh, you know, pencils if you have colored pencils. Um, the, other, the main difference between drawing and painting is drawing is very much about the edge of the object whereas painting is more about the interior of the object um whereas with a drawing you would draw the outside of it with painting you paint the inside of it and i don't know if that makes any sense but um i think generally speaking if you start one it's kind of hard to convert to the other because it's such a weird way of thinking about it i started as a pen and ink kind of artist um, like I said in my, um, is it art school worth it? I feel like um, art changed for me as soon as I understood that fact. And um, if you can transition, if you can understand that, then it shouldn't be too bad. It's kind of whichever you like aesthetically more is where I'd recommend you start. Um, both are fairly easy to get into. Drawing is definitely cheaper by a long shot a pencil on a piece of paper is like under five bucks a set of painting uh tools and canvas and all that that's oof it can be upwards to like 80 to 100 dollars to get everything you need so yeah uh, maybe start with drawing just because it's cheaper or maybe digital uh as long as you have like a tablet but that can be expensive too i don't know for me um just do the art you want to do and do it however that ends up looking and however that ends up working for you. For me, it's kind of a price point as far as that goes, I guess. Uh, this next question comes from TY is really gay and they ask, this is more of a question for you, but where does your inspiration come from? Um, that one's kind of complex. I don't know if I've got enough time in this video to bring it up totally, but generally speaking, experiences from my life, um, things that I enjoy, video games, uh, music, especially metal. Um, the, the main thing is that a long time ago, I realized uh, that there's no point in trying to actually communicate an idea uh, through artistic media. Uh, if you've ever, and this is not me trying to be pretentious, by the way, this is just like, I think everyone's taken at least one literature class where they're like, oh, you know, the, the curtains were red. And then um, the teacher's like, oh, well, that has to do with such and such and such and such is depression is blah, blah, blah. Well, sometimes the curtain's just red. Um, and that people can overread or underread things, uh, just based on people talking to me, uh, about my art and other people's art, uh, I've noticed that just, I don't bother. There's a lot of things that I shy away from just because, uh, it's how I see life. Um, I don't put logos of things in my art because I just, I, I'm very much against uh, that kind of thing. Um, 
like I don't wear logos on shirts uh, for big name companies or whatever just because it's like why am I paying you to buy a, a shirt that has advertising from you on it it seems like a completely like bizarre idea to me why do I pay someone else to have them advertise on me like I don't get it um, I think I've gotten off track here um, where does my inspiration come from? Um, my inspiration comes from my life. My inspiration comes from the things that I enjoy. And it comes from um, the things that I want to express, knowing full well that the, I probably will be misunderstood uh, just by nature of people wanting to put their own meaning on things just as a, a matter of course with all art. You can be incredibly blunt. You could write on it. You know, this is about uh, how much I love breakfast. And someone would be like, Man, he says that, but what does he really mean? It's just frustrating. So I just don't even bother anymore. It's nice when I can get something approximating it uh, going, but I've noticed that this isn't just a problem with me. It's a problem with like a lot of artists. So I, I, I put out my experiences and the things that I enjoy and just sort of go with the flow. That's a horrible answer, but it's kind of the answer. I feel like I'd need a lot more time than I've got for this question, um, but it is a good one, so thank you. Anyway, um, that's that's this for this painting. Uh, if you like it, if you want to get it, it's available on ColinMullen.com right now. Uh, available for you know normal price, and like I said, Mother's Day is coming up, so if you want to get a picture of a a bombed out bathroom for your for, for your uh your mom that's cool um anyway thank you guys so much for watching i'll see you around when i do um thank you for watching this channel means a lot to me and it means a lot to me that it means something to you guys so uh i will see you in a couple of weeks probably do another art stream sometime soon i'll let you know on twitter or on here see you soon bye